What is up down at Sideways, you lovely, lovely individuals of this beautiful planet, Eric and Mark here with you for another epi of League Unlock as we are entering the final Super Week, the final regular season week of action over in the LCS. Eight teams can get condensed all the way down to six. Yes, only two teams will not be making it to playoffs. Um... And it's likely, I mean, you look at the standings heading into this week, Immortals is obviously there with the lowest wins. They got the biggest losing streak. Most likely Immortals not making playoffs. Shopify just ahead of them with one more win. Listen to this final week schedule for Shopify in some must-win games. NRG, 100 Thieves, Cloud9. Good luck, boys. I'm, I'm not liking their chances <laughs> for Shopify Rebellion to make the upset, make the pull-off in this final super week for the LCS spring split. You laid it out. Immortals, three wins. You're, we're most likely looking at something like six, maybe at the minimum, bare minimum five, as those wins to get yourself one of these playoff spots uh, for the LCS. Immortals at three, three games remaining, and it doesn't really matter the schedule. Immortals has not ever shown us that they've had enough in the tank to go a full perfect perfect weekend of 2-0 and never mind the 3-0 and that you're looking at ahead of you necessary to get one of those spots Shopify Rebellion the next one up got one more win than Immortals so it's a little bit more possible and then you lay out the schedule and that's where it starts to become a tough issue for them now they've they've beaten the best teams that's where most of their wins come from they are the ultimate blue shell in the LCS so maybe this is 200 IQ this is exactly where they want to be that has to be the hopium if you are Shopify Rebellion, is to say that we have risen to the level of our opponents on the day, and that has been good for you in these top matches or you know where you found that you're up against the number one, number two squad in the LCS. Now, can you do it again is the other part that comes into it. And given what we have seen from all these other matches, these losses against the lower squad level teams, that's where you don't have this type of confidence in Shopify Rebellion. Pulling off the impossible is what it looks like. Even still, squads, you know, Team Liquid and Dignitas were only two games ahead of IMT. We're getting a direct head-to-head -head between Dig and Team Liquid. So whoever wins that, pretty much guaranteed to be heading towards playoffs. But Team Liquid kick things off against FlyQuest. Likely drop that. Maybe they get an upset at the hands of Dig. All of a sudden, they're staring at a barrel of 0-2 in what might be a must-win scenario against IMT. And at least if you're Team Liquid, you're thankful that it is IMT as that number three spot. You might also be looking that back in your history of playing against IMT and say, well, there was a couple of hiccups, a couple of road bumps, no questions asked against IMT for Team Liquid this time around. Not a situation you want to put yourself in. you got to put your best foot forward. Uh, you know, make the most attempt for that upset against FlyQuest. And then, of course, that zero win on that head-to-head -head with Dignitas. You're also believing Dignitas is going to have their eyes set on that head-to-head. -head, something to give that advantage. Because right now, five, you know, those five wins for both of these squads, you get that one to separate yourself, pull into that sixth territory. I think you're going to find yourself in a safe spot for playoffs. Total opposite final week of Shopify is Cloud9 on the docket. Dignitas, Immortals, Shopify Rebellion, pretty much three of the bottom teams in the LCS. Heading in, carrying momentum to playoffs. We need to see a 3-0, and we need to see a dominant, never in question, 3-0 out of the dubbed super team. Right, and that is the understanding. It's super team, right? Super team with super expectations is the way it looks at for Cloud9, so you need to be at that super type of level. Getting a 3-0 heading towards playoffs would, would give us that type of confidence in their type of performance. I think we've seen players like Jojo Pyun step it up in the last couple of weeks. Blabber is someone else I've talked about. And that's one of those things that we mentioned early in the struggles, looking at where he individually needed to improve. And then the questions about Vulcan alongside him, whether they're you know, building up that chemistry, the report between each other, and then the individual play of Vulcan was something holding back the bottom lane. And I think we've seen that start to bounce back for this Cloud9 team. Playoffs around the corner need to sharpen up to be that number one option from the LCS. And obviously that number one option is FlyQuest right now sitting first. They'll probably hold on to it, TL, NRG, and Dig. But this big test uh, 
for me, is looking at NRG this weekend because they have that FlyQuest match, as we mentioned. They follow that up on the final day by going against 100 Thieves. So two marquee matchups for them to prove that they're in that summer playoff type of form. And similarly, an opportunity for 100 Thieves to prove that they are legit contenders if they come away with the win. I'm, I'm thrilled that we get that type of matchup basically as that preview for what we'll have in playoffs between these two because you're right, NRG either steps up, shows that they are the summer champions type of form, give you that confidence heading into a best of series. Or you're looking at this young 100 Thieves lineup and what they have accomplished, what they have beaten expectations so far this spring split. And you're saying, see how far you can run with it through these playoff run and what they've got in store. And it's, you know, Obviously, live patch, what type of picks. I don't think anyone's, no one's going to be putting out anything spicy in the final week of regular season. You want to keep those cards close to the chest to be able to pull out the spice when playoffs do roll around. So just going through the motions probably for a lot of these squads. Again, eight teams getting narrowed down to six. Most of these teams, it's not super high stakes because they're already or one game away from clinching that playoff position. Marquee, well, sort of marquee matchup in the LPL today. BLG, obviously a single series loss to their name, matching up against the Jumpstart Kids, the hyped up Bun plus Phoenix. And despite some more solid individual play out of our latest prodigy, Milky Way in the jungle, it's BLG coming away with a 2-0. But have you ever seen a 9-1 Jax in the jungle and he's losing the game by 26 minutes? Uh, that is insanity and yes welcome to what is what blg can do on the rift even to someone playing as fantastic someone as transcendent right now as milky ways on fpx a clean controlled series quick series from blg to take out fpx and halt the momentum of this rising team in the lpl of course we check in with our boy milky ways and, and what he's been able to do and in game one relatively good relatively you know as much as you could expect from what the game state was given the advantages were quite heavy on the side of blg thanks to someone oh i might have heard of him knight in the mid lane making sure it's a big problem uh, what do you mean on the and, he, and he's a counter pick to ari he should have been useless uh that usually is dependent on if you can play annie and most <laughs> people usually find they say that they can i'm gonna unfortunately say i think we can throw care into the category where he's better on other champions than Annie and I think we got that proven quite clearly in game two yeah um I mean some of the Annie alts a lot of them were just on the support some of them were just straight up whiffs he did not look super comfortable on that pick maybe the guy who suffered the most from Azir being disabled on this patch was care because he did not look I can't believe he picked Annie after that game one honestly I wouldn't have gone back to it. There's no chance I'd, you know, even if you feel like that's the right option, there's no way I have the confidence on executing it. And then as well, what you had on the other side from Mr. Knight and how he was performing, he didn't have to do much on that Karma pick, but he was doing a lot out there on the Rift. And again, that Ari that Annie's supposed to be the counter pick to, it's Knight or it's Chovy for best Ari in the world. And I don't think there's anyone else in that discussion. No, man, and you can get styled on in so many different ways by someone like Knight on that R and making it happen. The thing we're tracking here, BLG power level response to taking a down a team that is rising in power in the LPL. This is good marks for where they stand as that elite top, top of the table option of the LPL. And then you check in with FPX. Does this diminish? Does this pour all the water on the hype and excitement, the heat that has been building for this team? I don't think so because yes, bad performance from care individually yes this is not the full performance from the rest of the team but you still had good stuff happening from milky ways and especially in that game too i think more than what you ever could possibly hope for good given what the game state was in so many other ways this is something where i still think that there's survivability for fpx but if you're one of these believers one of these guys that's only in on milky ways you are screaming about getting him on a team with players that can win their lanes and hold out the way they can against these top-notch teams where then you have an effect on the game because believe it or not, Milky Ways is ready to have an effect at that level in the LPL. Yeah, I think teams are already writing checks out for Summer to get Milky Way on their <laughs> squad and call RNG to make sure that they can get a buyout for him because uh, despite the O2, it's BLG, absolute domination from the best team in the LPL, but a team who's coming for that throne, that mantle, 
is top esports today it was cream getting a little bit of revenge on his former organization in omg and what's what's going on top esports it took them over 50 minutes today on the rift the team that's speed running the lpl just another day at the office for the boys just another day at the office. Just another two games of Aatrox for your boy. Three, you six, nine. Stop! Let this happening, guys. This is an epidemic across the world. That not only are we seeing this Aatrox as often as we are, as powerful as this pick represents, we're giving it into comfortable hands. Men that know what to do with that darkened sword up in the top lane. Yes, three, six, nine is one of those ones. Very familiar with the champion. And he made sure that it was OMG getting very familiar with the gray screen simulator in this game, making sure that it is top esports coming out ahead. Game one, not like uh, insanely ahead. And then you turn to game two, and I think things start to heat up even more for top esports. We, you know, the other day talked about the rookie versus Xiaohu matchup in 2024. It just it feels a little sad to watch. It's 2024, and I'm watching Tian and Mako like it's 2019, and they're in their absolute peak forms. It's, I mean, the number one thing to actually keep track of in this one for the top esports fans, this was an impeccably clean game from both Tian and Jackie Love is, are the two that I'm looking at. Both two guys that we, we know can get their hands in there, can get a little messy at times, a little bit of splatter all over the place. It was nothing like that clean napkins for your boys, making sure that it was a good one. And uh, as you mentioned, Mako. I, I can't believe this is one of those ones that goes under the radar for the moves, the transactions that happened in the LPL and how impactful he has been in getting that stability, getting that order for this top esports team. Can't give him enough praise. We're not far removed from Mako getting so flamed for being on that Chinese Asian Games roster. People didn't even want him being near it. And now, you know, we're six months later from that, and you're talking about him as one of the best supports in the LPL yet again, like we have so many times for so many years. Class is eternal with someone like him and what we are seeing with it. And it really has come forth and seen his stamp, his imprint of how he shot calls, what he's got the organization going through on this top esports team. The power of 369, the lethality of someone like Jackie Love. This is absolutely one of these squads that you can have this type of faith and have this type of excitement for the top end of the LPL. It's the final, the regular seed in the LCS, sure, but the pay-per-view headline, Mark's got the sweater on, T1 versus Gen G. Are the boys getting it done in a little bit of revenge? Oh, yeah, and we're going the full done. We're going three games. There's no chance that this be. doesn't get any other way. We're getting some excitement. I feel like we got to have something special cooking up. We've had all this wild cookbook mastery coming through from Kiri. It's been the Callista. It's been the Tom Kench. Who knows what? They got something special. They, I don't know what it is. I, I don't have the IQ to get to that point of where they're cooking stuff up, but they got something special for this matchup. And they better, given what we have seen from Gen G, because Chovy's cooking, Canyon's starting to get involved in the kitchen, and you better believe Keen, he's got his DoorDash up in the top side, and you better be ready for it. He's just ready to feed on that twisted fate. 0-4, <laughs> but he's still 2K gold ahead. Maybe a Yone out of Chove in this series. Uh, I'm feeling a little something like that to match up against Chove. But yeah, that is the must-see event over the weekend. That is it today, though, for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful souls. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.